All right, what's going on guys? This is my 1995 50SX. I just picked up from a buddy for a pretty dang good deal. Uh, it's got a couple of goodies on it, like the Kaufman's half pipe with the resonators. A little bit of billet here and there, you know. West Coast ride plate. It needs a couple of things, like when you try to go and start it, it just clicks. Pretty sure that's just the starter solenoid stuck in the e-box there. It's got a good battery. Still has some good factory shine on the fiberglass. But uh, just that, pulled the inserts out of the hall right there, you know. Everyone loves a red RTV. But uh, yeah, it's in pretty good shape overall. Gonna try to get her running before the fourth and see if she'll hit the lake. Let's just jump into this, guys. So uh, I got the holes all tapped out now. I just used the crescent wrench on this cheap tap. Got it from O'Reilly's for like four or five bucks. The holes are fairly straight. Camera throws it off a little, but you can see now that the, uh, the inserts pretty much want to hand thread right on in there. But um, yeah, pretty much just got to clean out the holes, get some of this marine weld mixed up and hang this ride plate back up. It's got a bunch of shit all over it. And, you know, hose it all down before we get it running, but uh, gotta get these old inserts out too, but yeah. The quick issue I just ran into was, uh, just drove one of these in, and these, in this kit, they're just a little bit longer than the factory stud. So sticking out about a quarter inch, I just took about three threads off of it. As you can see, it's a little shorter. I just took my hacksaw and I filed it down just a bit and it came out pretty good. And now, it's sitting in there pretty flush. I have a screw in there just holding it so the JB Weld doesn't dry to anything, but yeah, we'll get her done. This part should be done. All right, so next, we're gonna tackle that starter solenoid. So it's up in this E-box here. We're gonna disconnect the battery, pull that out, get the E-box out, get the new solenoid in, and see if that solves the clicking issue. All right, one quick thing to note here. So this is my old solenoid. When you get the cheap new one from Amazon, it's gonna have two wires, one on each post. You're gonna pull one of the posts off that just done thread. And my original one just had the one loop coming off both wires on the one terminal. So I just took the post off, put the wires right back on there, and it should be good to go. Of course, we ended up in shambles. I freaking put the solenoid in, and it was just clicking still. I put a screwdriver into the hole of the drive shaft right there, tried spinning the motor over, and the whole thing felt like it was seized. And it had me thinking, you know, well, one, did I get screwed over? And two, the motor ran right before I bought it. So what the hell? And I thought the jet drive seized up. But come to find out, I pulled the front cover off, and the starter was seized out. The Bendix was out in the starter, and the starter was locked up itself. So I pulled the starter out, and it was rusted shut. The Bendix still moves, but the whole starter itself is seized. I got a Wilson unit here from O'Reilly's. I put some silicone on it right there. Some guys on Facebook were saying that was a good idea, and then Loctite that bolt, all I had was blue. I should have had some red on there, but we'll see what happens there. I mean, it is missing this bracket that this one's got here, but I don't know. If it blows up the motor or something, it cracks it. I got this 650 we'll just throw in. Uh, but yeah, I'll grease up this O-ring and then uh, get this starter in and see what happens. Ran into more issues here on this lovely 40-year-old jet ski. Um, shoved a rod, nice soft aluminum one, down in this hole right there. Um, you could definitely spin the motor over free now after taking that starter out, but there's definitely uh, some rubbing going on with that prop and like the wear ring, so yeah, I think I'm going to have to tear this thing apart more and pull that whole jet pump out. Yeah. All right, guys. So uh, now we're into it a little too deep, more deep than I uh, kind of wanted to be into this jet ski. But uh ended up having to pull the pump off. Come to find out that the wear ring is a little swollen and it was uh, scraping against the prop. So, of course, I didn't want to move forward until that was addressed. So I pulled this apart. Uh, I pulled the shim and it had three shims in it. They didn't even look like shims. They looked like washers for like ball joints. But uh, yeah, a lovely guy on Facebook had the tool and uh, he helped me pop this off. 
just wanted two Red Bulls and said, get on your way and go ride. So, you know, got it on home. I'm going to put the pump all back together and uh, put a little silicone around the edges. If you guys haven't done this before, it's pretty easy. At least it was for me because someone was in here already. They put the scat prop on here. Um, it's kind of different on the SX. You're going to have this cone. It's kind of like the 650 SX style. Um, you're going to have the cone on the edge of the shaft here. You got to pop this cone off. It has a seal, so it could be a pain, if, especially if it's like mine it has purple dust. Um, <clears throat> you're going to pop that off, put this end here in a vise, and you need the prop tool or the impeller tool to put on the splines there. It has a nut. Not like the 550s, the regular JS. They have uh, a nut or like a hex on the end here. You can put the tool and then you pop the hex free. The, the hex is the prop on the SX. You, you, you spin the prop off the shaft here. Um, it's actually easier in my opinion. But, you know, since someone was in here, it kind of came free already. A little WD, a little bit of elbow grease came free. And uh, yeah, so we're going to get this all back together and uh, see how she goes. All right, so I got the pump all done here. Looks pretty good. I will say, be patient with these. They're uh, kind of a bitch to take apart and put back together. If they've been, you know, put together for a while, some of them since the 80s, could be a pain in the butt to take apart. But uh, we got it all back together now. I'm gonna use some of this uh, Loctite Marine adhesive sealant. It's like silicone. Uh, I'm gonna use this to glue it to the hull and uh, bolt it back up and then this should be all done. All right, so it's the next day now and uh, excuse this wild mess here. I'm a messy mechanic as you can tell, um, but we got the pump. It's all siliconed in there. It's all bolted up. Just gotta get the ride plate on, the intake grate. And uh, yeah, next thing we gotta do after that, put the pipe on, finish bolting the motor back up. Should be good to start it. We'll see how she goes. Ride plates all in. Same with the intake grate. I'll add some silicone up in between the gaps later. So uh, I got the car ball rebuilt and mounted back on. You can see those new genuine Makuni diaphragms kind of sitting in there. Uh, I got all the lines all zip tied to the barbs. They weren't before. Um, I have a new fuel line running here for the return because whoever had this before, they used some bunk welding tip as a fuel restrictor and they basically cut the hose in half one end there and then put the other in there and spliced it together well that was leaking really bad so what i ended up doing was i went to like harbor freight or ace hardware you get a pack of 030 mig welding tips i don't know what what other tip he had in there but it was like short and fat um but i got an 030 mig tip you get like 10 of these for five bucks uh, and I just took it and I jammed it into the line with a screwdriver as far up as I can get it, which actually ended up being pretty dang perfect and close to where the other one was sitting. I put a, uh, zip tie right around this to keep it, uh, from moving back and forth within the line and also to keep any fuel from getting past or, uh, behind the, uh, fuel restrictor itself or welding tip. And uh, yeah, it seems to be doing a lot better and that definitely shouldn't leak. All right guys, so uh, it's all buttoned up here. Uh, I even got my reg in it and the screwdriver. Um, not gonna lie, I got a little eager and I wanted to hear this thing run. It's uh, about one in the morning. So um, started it up pretty late and not gonna lie, I overheated the crap out of it. So if you might notice, this line is not pink anymore and all these hoses are different, even the pickup. Um, that is because the pink hose melted to the half pipe, even running it on a hose and everything, it melted the hoses straight off. I should have been checking. There was no water coming out of the pisser. I was too eager and dark to even notice, uh, that there was no water coming out of there. Um, so I ended up taking off the manifold, this half pipe again, uh, all the hoses, and I pulled out probably two pounds of sand. I should have figured because this ski is originally from California. So someone's definitely ridden it at the beach, especially since the wear ring was swollen. That's definitely been in some salt water. So I pulled the pipe off, pulled the manifold off, pulled all the hoses. I probably shopped back maybe two pounds of sand out of this whole system. It was clogged. If you have a 
Kaufman's pipe big tip make sure that pinhole right about here on the top of the half pipe is clear mine was full of sand and soot um, even only after a minute of this thing running you can any drop of water on this half pipe it would sizzle and boil right off uh, make sure that hole's clear to keep this cool and I ended up just replacing all these hoses I used a hydrocore hose so I got a new hose running there new hose running there into the exhaust and we should be good. I'll probably test it tomorrow because it's about four in the morning now and everyone is probably asleep. So yeah. A little longer than a few minutes later. I got her pretty much all finished up here. I got uh, some fresh 40 to one mixed in the tank. It's pretty much ready to go. I'm pretty confident the cooling system's good. It, uh, it's all clear and free now. Air blows right through it so water should go through too. Um, just gonna see if it fires up real quick and take her onto the lake if she does. Let's see. Fire right up. That's a cowie. she's ready to go now let's get her all loaded up get the carrier mounted let's give this thing a try here all right got my homeboy here on a 750 
Oh. And caught up my candle bars. <laughs> I think that wraps this thing up. It, it's running pretty damn good. Okay, back from the lake. Got the jet ski mounted on the stand again, shoveled into my messy garage. Still even have the life jackets and straps up in the tray there. But uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna consider this project all done. The only thing left I can really think of is the hood seal's kind of cracked, but I do have another one right there. And the grips got eaten up pretty good after that first ride, but I do have another set of grips lying around somewhere, so maybe when I have some free time, I'll slap all that on there and consider this really, really finished. But other than that, I really enjoy this ski. It's pretty dang quick for a 550. That half pipe and prop alone almost get that thing to keep up with my 650 swap flat deck there. So I'm pretty happy with this. I'll probably keep it until I sell it for an SXR or something nicer. But other than that, if you guys liked the video and enjoyed it, like and subscribe for more. Peace.